rapper Inga Marchand, better known by her stage name, Foxy Brown, was born on September 6, 1978 in Brooklyn, New York. Her deep complexion and striking features are a result of her Trinidadian American mix, including Afro-Trinidadian, Indo-Trinidadian, and Chinese Trinidadian. While her mother raised her and her two older brothers in a very nice neighborhood, Foxy gravitated to life in the concrete jungle as a teen. There was something that intrigued me about the projects. I didn't come from that. I grew up in Park Slope in a brownstone. I used to go to my girlfriend's house in East New York in bed after school, and there would be the guys parked on the corner in the Mercedes 190E with the mesh tank tops. That's the scene I would go to, and that would be my escape. Although she would be drawn by the allure of the criminal element and illegal lifestyle, Foxy quickly realized that her goals and ambitions stretched further than the dope-infested corners, avenues, and boulevards surrounding her. All my friends were in the park smoking weed and getting pregnant. I didn't want to be the young black girl having a baby, a baby's father, being on welfare. That wasn't going to be my story. Her story would center around music. At just 14, Foxy displayed an innate talent for putting together raps, capturing the attention of her family and friends. She also had the added benefit of being in close proximity to some people already making waves in the industry. DJ Clark Kent, her cousin's best friend, was always around playing records, as well as Tone of the production duo Trackmasters, who lived next door. Originally rhyming under the name Big Shorty, Foxy inked her first record deal with Capitol Records, but would change her name to AKA before being unceremoniously dropped from the label. More rejection came after she was also turned down by Puff Daddy and Bad Boy Records. Before heading back to the drawing board, she officially assumed the name Foxy Brown, in homage of Pam Greer's character in the 1974 film of the same name. Her next go around would come with a breakthrough. Chris Lighty, then CEO of Violator Records, would conspire with Tone from Trackmasters and Steve Stout to covertly add one of Foxy's verses to the remix to LL Cool J's 1995 single, I Shot Ya. Following up that performance, she made several more appearances on major hits, including Total's No One Else, Puff Daddy Remix, Cases Touch Me Tease Me, and a remix of Tony Braxton's You're Making Me High. Her status would skyrocket, making her one of the hottest acts in rap without even having an album out. Before she knew it, a label bidding war ensued. Ultimately, 17-year-old Foxy would end up signing with Def Jam Records. In 1996, she released her debut album titled Il Na Na. It debuted at number seven on the Billboard 200 album chart and produced two hit singles, Get Me Home featuring Blackstreet, which made it into the top 10 on the R&B chart. And I'll Be featuring Jay-Z, which also made it into the top 10 on the same chart, as well as became her first and to date only song to make it into the top 10 on the Hot 100. Make the whole world sit up and take notice. Now I take over. Y'all take over. All that success, though, would be marred by Foxy's personal antics that would continue to be numerous throughout her adult life. Now, I can't get into all of them, or else we'd be here a while, but I will touch on the most talked about throughout the video. In 1997, she received a 30 day suspended sentence and 80 hours of community service after she turned herself in on an arrest warrant for missing a court appearance for spitting on two hotel workers in North Carolina who were unable to find a clothing iron for her in a timely fashion. While the release of her album marked a monumental moment in hip hop history, it was downplayed due to the comparisons between her and fellow female rapper Lil' Kim. After all, they both hailed from Brooklyn, even attended the same high school for a time, each released solo debuts just one week apart, then appeared together on the cover of The Source. It only made sense for the two to come together for a collaboration. And when it never materialized, something seemed amiss. As it turned out, those comparisons inevitably led to fierce competition and a decades-long feud. The origins of the feud have never really been clear-cut. In the beginning, though, it appeared that they were cool with each other. Eventually, things made their way into the music, starting with the Lil' Cease track, Play Around. Lil' Kim was featured alongside Puff Daddy, whose line, Stop trying to sound hmm. like her two bitches, was widely believed to be referencing Foxy. Kim fired again on the title track of her sophomore album, The Notorious K.I.M. This chick running around with a think ass gap and fake ass raps have a panic attack. You ain't a star and your record comes to know. Foxy clapped back on Capone and Noriega's Bang Bang. 
the talk slick. Fuck is all that sneak shit. You and Diddy, y'all killed me, but that's subliminal shit. Then, on the afternoon of February 25th, 2001, as Kim and her entourage were exiting New York hip-hop radio station, Hot 97 Studios, after finishing an on-air interview, they encountered Capone and his crew, who were entering the building, according to police. An argument erupted, which ended in more than 20 shots being fired from five different weapons, and one man suffered a gunshot wound in the back. Shortly thereafter, Foxy spoke to MTV News about the incident and the feud at large. Despite the verbal volleying, she said she never paid much mind to the rivalry with Kim. It didn't bother me, because I was okay with myself. I didn't have to ridicule anybody to feel better about myself. It's not important to me. I don't worry about what Kim does. I set the tone for what Foxy does. I really don't know how it started, but Russell and I, we got together and I said, Russell, I want to call a truce. I want to have a sit down with Kim. I don't care what it is. Let's just end it. We can even do a collaboration. We're bigger than this. If it has to start with me, let it start with me. No such truce would take place. Following the release of Il Nana, Foxy joined fellow New York-based hip-hop artists Nas, AZ, and Cormega, later replaced by Nature, to form the supergroup known as The Firm. Their debut album, Simply Called The Album, entered the Billboard 200 as well as the top R&B hip-hop album chart at number one. Foxy's sophomore effort, China Doll, dropped in 1999. It outdid her debut, immediately capturing the top spot on the Billboard 200. The accomplishment made her only the second female rapper to do so after Lauryn Hill. Unfortunately, things went downhill from there. The first of the project's three singles that were released, Hot Spot, only barely made it on the Hot 100, and the second, I Can't, featuring Total, failed to make the chart at all. Foxy's love life was on fire at this time, and she was in a serious relationship that turned into an engagement with rapper Corrupt. After about a year, though, they parted ways. The reason, according to Foxy, had to do with another beef with another female rapper, Eve. Their issues apparently got kicked off when Eve levied some thinly veiled disses at Foxy and Lil' Kim on her tracks, 2001's Let Me Blow Your Mind and 2002's Double R What. This started a back and forth between the two, trading disses on several songs. Foxy then revealed in an interview with Wendy Williams that she hated Eve, and the main reason why was Foxy believed Eve had snitched about her alleged affair with DMX, causing her breakup with Corrupt. In 2000, Foxy announced that she was suffering from depression. She subsequently entered drug rehab to receive treatment for an addiction to painkillers. Her third album, Broken Silence, was released in 2001. While it did debut on the 200 chart at number five, the singles didn't impact the Hot 100. Around this time, she became engaged for the second time to Jamaican dancehall artist Spraga Benz. However, just like her first engagement, this one didn't turn into a marriage either, as they split up a couple of years later. In 2002, Foxy returned to the music scene with the single, Stylin'. It was slated to be the first single from her upcoming album, Il Na Na 2, The Fever. The following year, while her fans were still waiting for her to drop her next project, she appeared on Wendy Williams' radio show and went public with her desire to sever ties with her label and stated that her forthcoming project had been shelved indefinitely. The album would have been released under a newly formed joint venture agreement between Bad Boy Records and Def Jam Records. However, Foxy explained that she never agreed to allow Diddy to own 50% of her contract and that he'd asked her to radically change her image, including her hair color. She also added that when she asked the head of her label to let her out of her contract, he told her it would only happen, quote, over his dead body. While it would seem up to this point that Foxy's dedication to her work would fill up most of her days, she still had time to establish a substantial amount of arrests and court appearances. In August 2004, she went to a nail salon for a mani-pedi. According to her, someone forgot the mani part, and that's when the trouble started. Foxy became angry during the visit when she was told the establishment was going to close before she received her manicure. When she got up to leave without paying, employees locked the door. She said they were demanding payment for the manicure and the pedicure, and when she wouldn't pay for both, prosecutors claimed she physically attacked one of the managers. When employees ran to Foxy's car to block her from leaving, prosecutors said the rapper hit one of the workers with her cell phone. Her lawyer denied this, but confirmed that a struggle had taken place. A police officer did let her go after responding to a call and a receipt that showed that she did pay for the pedicure. The whole thing was finally resolved two years later, when Foxy was sentenced to three years probation. 
Upon leaving Def Jam, Foxy began recording again in late 2004. Months later, she reunited with Jay-Z, performing dates on tour with him as well as signing back to Def Jam under his regime when he became the new president and CEO. Now she could finally get back to work on her album she planned on titling Black Roses. In late 2005, Foxy held a press conference to reveal that her hearing had deteriorated so much she needed someone to tap out beats on her shoulder when she was in the recording studio. She announced she was suffering from severe and sudden sensorineural hearing loss in both ears, and almost distraught Foxy conveyed her pain by telling stories of sleepless nights. To suddenly lose your hearing after 10 years as a professional artist, I questioned God, why me? Naturally, she put black roses aside during this time. Her doctor issued a positive prognosis, saying she could recover after surgery. According to her rep, around three months prior, she underwent surgery and was well on her way to having all her hearing back. By the next summer, Foxy said her hearing had been restored and she was planning to resume recording. Her label didn't set a release date, but hoped her album would be out by the end of that year. Not only would that not happen, but rumor had it that Jay-Z was disappointed in her lack of productivity on the album and was planning to drop her from the Def Jam roster. Not surprisingly, that is what eventually happened. Foxy decided to switch gears and put out a street album instead of a studio version titled Brooklyn's Dawn Diva. Again, a date was scheduled only to later be delayed. Brooklyn's Dawn Diva was ultimately released in the spring of 2008 after many delays, some of which were directly linked to her legal problems. The year before, Foxy was again back to her bad girl ways when in February, Florida police arrested her on charges of battery and obstruction of justice. According to police, while in a beauty supply store, she threw hair glue at an employee and then swung her arms in a struggle with a police officer who was attempting to get her to leave after the shop had closed. On top of that, just the week before, Foxy was spared jail time after violating the probation she received after the 2004 nail salon fight. For that screw up, she got sentenced to one year in jail. She was later given 76 days in solitary confinement due to a physical altercation that took place with another prisoner. She was finally released from prison in April 2008. Also in 2007, she was arrested for allegedly assaulting her neighbor. Police said the two women got into a fight over Foxy blasting her car stereo. The neighbor alleged that a few days later, they passed each other on the street and Foxy hurled her Blackberry at her, cutting her lip and knocking a tooth loose. Foxy was charged with felony assault, misdemeanor assault, and criminal possession of a weapon. She took a deal and claimed that the bad blood between her and the woman was over. Come on now, this is Foxy Brown. You know that's not what happened. Three years later, Foxy was raring to go again. In 2010, she walked by the same neighbor's window, stuck her butt out, and unleashed a curse-filled tirade against her. The cops were called and Foxy was hauled off for violating a still active order of protection the neighbor had taken out on her back in 2007. Foxy ended up avoiding jail time when the charges were dropped. If you thought after all this time, Foxy's beef with Lil' Kim had resolved itself, you'd be wrong. A decade later, the ladies were at it again, trading disses with their music. Then there was the failed Hot 97 Summer Jam concert reunion of 2013, as well as their back and forth on social media in 2016 after a fake flyer circulated about the two of them performing at the same club. Apparently, sometime in early 2017, Foxy gave birth to her first child, a baby girl. Wendy Williams ended up being the one to announce it in March on her TV talk show. Wendy hinted to a reggae star being the father, but nothing was confirmed. Then in September of that year, Foxy finally posted the first photo of her daughter on her Instagram. That post came just two days after another post of a video of her ex, Spraga Benz, with the caption, Daddy. In 2020, Foxy reunited with her group The Firm for the song Full Circle from Nas's album, King's Disease. Today, Foxy appears to be doing well. She's still performing, but from the looks of her social media, her primary focus is raising her daughter.